fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Horse oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Are you Silver! John Meekly was an ambitious little man with a spirit that was far bigger than his physique. He stood five feet two inches in his boots. John would stand up against anybody, but got the best of no one. Yet he continued to bristle like a bantam rooster at the least slight or provocation. There was the time, for instance, when John was at the cafe in Rocktown. The man standing next to John was six feet tall. Hey, barkeep, give me some service, will you? Be with you in a minute, John. Well, keep the shirt on, Shorty. You'll get waited on when your turn comes. Shorty, huh? Say that again, mister. I just dare you to say that again. <laughs> hey, John Meekly's rearing up again. Yep, always picking on a big hombre, too. <laughs> this is going to be it. <laughs> John, why don't you forget what he said? If you tell me what you want... No, wait, wait a minute. I heard him call me Shorty. If you'll just dare to call me that again, I'll... Just show what will you do? What? Shorty, <laughs> why, you... You better go outside and pull on. <laughs> I'll carry you out. No, hey, put me down. Put me down. Said, Let me get through, folks. Someone open the door. Yeah, I'll open it. Here you go, Shorty. Oh! <laughs> Another time, John was getting ready to mount his horse at the hitch rack when a buckboard and team hurriedly swung in alongside and came to a quick stop. Easy there, stand still, will you? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, you crazy coyote, you almost knocked me down. Why don't you look where you're going? Well, I'm sorry, fella. Being as you're kind of short, I couldn't see you behind that horse. But short, am I? You listen to me. If you get down from that buckboard, I'll teach you a thing or two. Well, now, I was aiming to get down anyhow. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it didn't look so big to you when I was sitting down, huh, fella? That don't make any difference. I'll teach you to watch where you're going. Oh, get out uh, of my way. I'm in a hurry. Oh. <laughs> I'll see you again sometime, half my Even at home, John Meekly never used discretion in dealing with his big, strong-armed wife, Matty. Get up and move out of my way. How do you expect me to sweep with you sitting there? Matty, don't talk to me like that. Hmm. I've told you over and over. And if you don't learn to be more polite sometime, I'm Threatening gonna... me again, huh? 
you little brute. Get out of here. Go on, get out of here before I brain you with this broom. Oh, wait, go on, now, now, get, get out. Get on, now. I'm going. Go on. <laughs> that big, mad little runt. After Matty had run John meekly out of the house, the little man who wanted people to think he was tough mounted his horse and rode into Rocktown. As he approached the bank, great excitement suddenly broke out. Whoa! Whoa! Say, it looks like a couple of outlaws coming from the bank and heading for their horses. Yeah, they're yeah. yeah. They're riding right this way. I better duck fast and get between the buildings. Get up there. Get up. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Get up. A few minutes later, John came out from cover and rode to the hitch rack in front of the cafe, where a crowd stood watching. Oh, there! Oh, hey, John! Why didn't you try to stop those outlaws? Yeah, they were heading right your way. You could have flooded them. Yeah, Meekly's trying to act tough in the cafe, but he runs to cover when he's got a chance to prove he is. Uh, 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 Listen here, you better get back inside and tend to your own business if you know what's good for you. Oh, 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 there he goes getting tough again. Uh Someday someone will tear that bantam apart. (laughs) Why, you ornery sidewinder? You can't call me a bantam. Wait a minute. He's really scared of his own little (laughs) staff. Bob, get inside the cafe and get as many men as you can to form a posse. Easy there. All right, Sheriff. Hey, Sheriff. I'll ride with the posse. Look, Meekly. You better stay here in town and help protect the women folk. Riding in a posse after outlaws is a man's (laughs) job. (laughs) That's right, Sheriff. Anyhow, John Meekly's a little too tough. He might hurt them outlaws before we could get him to jail. I'll go and find some men for the posse. If Bob wasn't your deputy, I'd (laughs) tell you. Now, Meekly, don't make any more threats. Every time you do, somebody stands you on your head in the gutter. You better learn that acting tough and really being tough are two different things. You tell Bob to bring the men over to the jailhouse. Get up there. Get up. Little John Meekly waited until he saw the posse leave town. Then he rode slowly homeward along the trail, feeling that the world was against him because of his size. As he rounded a bend in the trail, John was filled with sudden panic as he saw two horsemen riding toward him not more than 50 feet away. They were the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto. John pulled to a halt and thrust his hands high over his head. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Now I'm in for it. Oh, 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 oh. Look, mister, I, I know you two are outlaws and that you robbed the bank in town a while ago, but I... Well, I got my hands up. <laughs> We're not outlaws, and we have no intention of drawing against you. <laughs> Isn't that right? You not need put up hands. <laughs> but, but the mask. I, I thought only outlaws wore masks. Oh, forget the mask. Uh, what was that you mentioned about the bank being robbed a while ago? Yes, the Rocktown Bank was robbed by two big outlaws. I remember now neither one of them was a redskin, so I guess they couldn't be you. The sheriff led a posse after them out the West Trail... I offered to go, but they just laughed at me like always. Why should they laugh at you? Well, being little and all, I'm not able to be tough like the rest of them. Oh, I've tried to act like I'm tough, but they all know it's just an act. Even my wife, Mattie, runs me out of the house with a broom when I try to act like a man should around his own home. Well, there's more to being a man than just being tough, Mr... I'm John Meekly. I'm glad we met you, John. Tell me, did you ever hear of Napoleon Bonaparte? Can't say as I have. Does he live around these parts? (laughs) No. Some years ago, Napoleon was a great general and became emperor of France. Oh. He was a small man, John. Not your bill. Yet at one time, he conquered almost all of Europe. He never let the fact that he was short bother him. You don't tell me. That's your something. Do you reckon folks laughed at him, too? Well, if they did, they were sorry for it later. Oh, I sure wish there was some way I could make folks forget I'm a little hombre. Maybe there is a way. What way, mister? If uh, you're willing to trust me, 
You can come to our camp near here and we'll talk it over. I guess I can trust you all right since you didn't draw against me. Yes, I'll go along with you, stranger. And I sure hope you do have an idea that'll... It'll make things different for me around Rocktown. All right, let's get going. Come on, Silver. Get up, come. Get up there. After they arrived in the Lone Ranger's camp, John meekly listened intently as the Lone Ranger talked. Father and I were trailing a certain outlaw named Bill Derrick. Big man riding a Palomino. He left Pecos with another outlaw, though we don't know anything about him. Say, one of those outlaws who robbed the bank had a Palomino. I noticed as they rode toward me. He was a big armory, too. Both of them had bandanas covering part of their faces. I'm sure he was Bill Derrick. There's a reward for his capture... But he's smart enough always to evade a posse. That's right. I've found that outlaws generally follow a certain pattern. And one of Derek's tricks was to have someone posted in town, both before and after he pulled a job, to tip him off as to what was happening. You, you think he has someone spying out in town now? It's possible. And that's where you come in. Me? What could I do? You want to prove yourself to the men in town, don't you, John? Yes. Father and I will always be nearby, and I promise you, you won't come to any harm. If things work out, everybody's attitude will change toward you. Oh, all right, mister. Reckon if you've got a plan, I can do my part. Good. Now listen closely, and I'll tell you exactly what to say. And... That afternoon, John Meekly went to Rocktown alone and entered the cafe. Well, well, here comes Meekly. Too bad the sheriff decided not to take you with the posse. <laughs> oh, I, I reckon it's just as well. You see, in the excitement, I forgot to tell the sheriff I know who one of them outlaws is. Uh, you do? You mean you recognize one of them? Well, just who do you think he was, Meekly? Ever hear of an outlaw named Derek? Bill Derrick? Bill Derrick? Yeah, the sheriff has a handbill on him posted right out in front of the jail. Yes. Well, one of them was Derrick. I'm sure of it. Well, well, knowing who he is, if you aren't making all that up, won't help much in catching him. That's Maybe I got an idea of where he's hiding out, too. Well, look, Meekly, that's a going too far. Yeah, stop trying to act wise. How could you find out where Derrick's hiding? I'm not saying. But since the posse isn't back, if some of you want to go along with me... Maybe we can capture them outlaws and get the reward. <laughs> Listen to him. Now he wants to lead a posse of his own. Yeah, you go capture him yourself, John. Yeah, you're supposed to be tough. You can keep all the reward, too. <laughs> all right, you sneering bunch of coyotes. Maybe I will go get Derek. Maybe I will show you I can be tough. <laughs> Shorty, if you ever did, I'd add a hundred to the reward and give drinks on the house to boot. <laughs> all right, go on, laugh. But I'll show you. You just wait and see. <laughs> John left the cafe and, mounting his horse, rode from town along the trail the outlaws had taken. Following the Lone Ranger's plan, he was playing a part, but he felt very nervous as he rode. I hope the masked man and Indian saw me leave the cafe. Get up there. Ho! Oh, whoa well there, ho! Oh. Get on, get up there. Get on. Whoa, ho, oh, oh. ho. Where are you heading, Shorty? I got this gun on you, so you better be careful and talk up. But I was... Uh, I was just going down... Now, the... look, I heard that chatter of yours back in the cafe, and I followed you. Maybe like these armories back there say, you're just a lot of talk. But I knew better this time when you started blabbing about Bill Derrick. You're going to find him, all right, because I'm taking you to where he's hiding right now. All right, get moving. Uh, sure, sure. Get, on, get, on. get up, get up. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When he was overtaken on the trail and ordered at the point of a gun in the hands of a tough-looking man to go with him to Derek's hideout, John meekly once more experienced a panicky feeling. As they went along the trail, John glanced hurriedly around, hoping to see some sign of the masked man and Indian, but without success. By the time he and his companion reached a deserted cabin in the hills, John was sorry he had listened to the Lone Ranger. But there was nothing he could do but stop and dismount. Oh, 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 oh. Here you are. <clears throat> Hurry up, Ron. Get inside and meet Derek. Look, I... I really didn't know where this place was at all. Honest, I was bluffing back there when I Shut said... Shut up I... and get moving. Oh. Inside. This little runt coming to the cafe yapping about recognizing you when you rode from town today. He said he knew where you were hiding out. We'll have to light out then. Maybe he told the sheriff all that too. Nope, he didn't. Seems like people in town laugh at this little armory because he likes to make out he's tough and he's always getting bounced around by someone. He asked to go with the posse, but the sheriff wouldn't let him. So you knew who I was when you saw me, I sure did. <laughs> you see, I really... He tried to get the men at the cafe to... Come out here and capture you for the reward, but they laughed at him. And the way he talked, though, I knew for once he wasn't putting on an act. He found out somehow. Yeah, I guess it don't matter how he did it. But if he yapped long enough, someone might believe him. We'll make sure his mouth is shut for keeps. <laughs> I guess they ran out of material when they got around to him. He's sure a sorry excuse for a man. There's a little runt with a big mouth. Now, you wait a minute, you dirty side <laughs> ah, shut child. up. <laughs> See what I mean? He tries to act tough and always winds up flat on his back. All right, get on your feet before I kick the stuffing out of you. Oh! Oh, I'm getting up. All right, grab him, Pete. Hold his arm. I got him. Oh, let me go. Uh, listen, you either talk fast and tell how you found out where I was hiding and who I am, or I'll plant this big fist of mine across your mouth. Yes, Yes, I'll tell you honest. Start talking, then. It was part of a plan. Me going to the cafe and saying that. What do you mean, a plan? Well, I met two hombres. A masked man and an Indian. They said they'd been trailing you and guessed you pulled that robbery. The masked man planned for me to go to the cafe and talk like I did. A masked man and an Indian? Don't make sense. Yes, it does, you fool. That masked hombre and the Indian have been after me for some time. I'm beginning to see all this straight now. The masked man said you might have someone planted there in town. If I talked and said I knew who those outlaws were, that someone would follow me and bring me right to you. The masked man and Indian were to follow, but they crossed me up. So that's it. They were going to follow, huh? And they used you for the fall guy. Too bad you listened to that masked man, but good for us. Well, what are you going to do, Bill, if they followed us? It's our chance to get rid of that hombre. <laughs> they didn't expect this half pint to get scared and squeal like it did. So they won't know we're expecting them. Let's get outside pronto and bring that wine and little hombre with you. We'll uh, wait in ambush until those two show up and fill them with lead. Then we'll give Shorty here what's coming to him. Come on, let's go. <laughs> A few minutes later, after tying John Meekly's hands behind his back, the outlaws left the cabin, taking John with them. All right, Shrimp. Get going out the door. Yes, yes, I'm going. Well, like I said before, Half Pint, it's too bad you let that masked man talk you into this. By sticking your nose into our affairs, you signed your own death warrant. Yeah, we'll fill him with lead after we ambush that mask armory in the end then. No, no, listen. I'm sure they won't come. They weren't around when you stopped me on the trail. I looked to see if they were. I don't care what you say about that. You don't know that masked man like I do, Shorty. He's got plenty of smart tricks he uses against hombres like us. Maybe you uh, didn't see him anywheres, but I'm betting he was around somewheres and that him and that red skin are following the trail left by you and Pete right now. Well, here are the horses. We'll lift Shorty on his and I'll leave. All right, hit letter. Let's get going. <laughs> Help Shorty in the saddle, Lou. Sure. All right, Shorty. Up you go. Up. Yeah. There you are, oh. shrimp. Uh, get on your own horses. We haven't much time to get to the place where we're waiting now, boys. Yep. Hand me Shorty's reins, Lou. Here you are. Steady, boy. Let's go. Yeah, make it fast. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. 
Unknown to John Meekly, when he left town, the Lone Ranger and Toto had seen him and had also seen the outlaw, Lou, following. They had ridden along an arroyo which paralleled the trail and had witnessed Lou stop John. Then they followed. The Lone Ranger and Toto stayed some distance behind, relying on their ability to follow the hoof marks of the two they were trailing. When they reached the point where Lou and John had turned from the main trail to a branch trail, the Lone Ranger pulled to a halt. Go, Silver Hole. Easy now. Now, the branch trail leads into the narrow valley on the right, Toto. I suspect the hideout is there. Ah. I hope we can get there before Derek breaks down meekly and makes him talk, Toto. Derek will want to know how meekly got his information. You think little man tell about us? Derek will get the truth from him once he starts. John meekly isn't a coward, but his size has always been against him, and he knows it. As we ride the branch trail, I'll tell you how we'll approach the hideout so as to take them unawares. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Meantime, Derek and the other two outlaws had hidden in ambush behind some large boulders a short way up the branch trail from the cabin. They had taken John's gun, and the little man stood with his hands tied behind his back between Derek and Pete. Finally, they heard hoofbeats approaching beyond a bend in the trail, just a short distance away from the boulders. Here they come. Sight your guns at the bend. The minute they appear, we'll all shoot. They won't have a chance. I never know what hit them. We'll settle shorty right after. All right, this is it. They'll come around the bend in a minute. Get set. No, you dirty crook. I won't let you ambush him. Oh, you I shin you. I'll fix that shrimp. Oh. Hey, look. A white stallion on the paint, but with empty saddles. <laughs> Well, I'll beep. At least I can put a bullet in the runt. Oh, I've hit. Hold on, all of you. You're covered. Hey, they're above us on top of the boulders. Drop your guns. Drop them. They both got the drop on us. I'll get one of them. No, you're not going. No, I stopped the bullet. I give up. No. I give up. No. We're coming down. Come on. Um, that man. sure was good work, mister. <laughs> Little fellow seemed to be all right. Are you hurt, John? No. No, I, I'm all right. I thought you forgot me. I told them about you. They made me do it. Yes, I know. But I saw what you did when you thought they were going to shoot us. You've got what it takes, John. Oh, I, I couldn't let them do it. But then the saddles were empty after all. Yes. We dismounted up trail a bit and sent the horses on. And we cut across to these boulders and climbed up just in time. I suspected an ambush, and this was the logical place. Gosh, that sure was smart figuring, mister. We'll get their horses, and we'll tie these crooks on them and take them to town. Here, I'll cut your cords. Oh. This one over here. This one. There you are. Now, get a gun. I think the people in town have a surprise coming. Let's get going. It was just about dusk. The sheriff and the posse had returned to town and had gone to the cafe. They were inside talking over events of the day. Well, we didn't have any luck, but we'll try again tomorrow. Hey, Sheriff, what do you think about the talk and they say John Meekly did in here early this afternoon? I think just what the rest of you think. Poor little John was just acting up again. He heard about Derek or read that handbill I got across the street. Just decided to tell that story. That's all. (laughs) He was sure talking tough, Sheriff. Even hinted that he might go bring in Derek all by himself. (laughs) That's right, Sheriff. You should have heard him. You ought to make Meekly a deputy. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Sheriff! Sheriff! Better come take a look, Prado. What's up? John Meekly's coming up the street with three hombres tied their horses and holding a well, gun on well, him. It can't be. Yeah. Great day. i got to see this. So do I. Come on. Ah, oh, oh, golly, it is Meekly. Hi, Sheriff. I got a few outlaws for you to put in jail. What is this, John? How in That one there's Bill Derrick. There's a big reward for him, I understand. The money they stole from the bank is in his saddlebags. Holy smoke, Sheriff. The bank money is here in the saddlebags. Sheriff, how'd you ever do it? We thought you were just talking loco. What a man he turned out to be. Well, he may be a little man, but we got to admit he must be plenty tough to round up those outlaws. You're right. John, I'm sorry I misjudged you. You'll get the reward on Derrick, all right, and the reward from the bank, too. John Meekly, owner of Coyote. I've been hunting for you after the wild tale you told at the cafe today. Now you get on. Just a minute, Matty. See them three tough-looking hombres sitting there in them saddles? So sorry, like. 
I see him. And your husband, John, just captured him. What's more, one of them's Derek, one of the toughest outlaws in the territory. Oh, you say my husband captured him? Yeah. You can take the sheriff's oh. word for it that I just brought him in, Matty. Oh. What's more, I ain't going home till I'm good and ready. That's the way to talk, John. Sure how tough you are, John. <laughs> Matty will let you be boss now, I bet. <laughs> Ray Chapman Catfish. And to think I ran him out this morning with a broom. Reckon I just ain't the type to get tough with a female, Matty. But every man's got limits to his temper. That's the way, John. Of course, John. I remember. Yeah, tell us, John. Just how on earth did you do it all by yourself? Yeah, well, uh, as a matter of fact, Sheriff, I guess I'd better uh, tell you that I... If it I... wasn't for the Lone Ranger, we wouldn't be here. Uh, the Lone, Lone Ranger? Ranger. <laughs> Man alive, John. You turned out to be so tough when you met up with these crooks that Derek thinks you're the Lone Ranger without his mask on. <laughs> no, uh, that's sure a hot one. Put those crooks in jail, man. I'm sick of looking at him. Right, right. Yeah. Come, on. Come, on. Come on now. Imagine. All right. John Meekly getting outlaws to thinking he's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> what do you think of that, boys? <laughs> Ain't that something? <laughs> <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.